right on top of the money, right there. See, so Joe sees he's dead, and he gives him his rolling block. And he comes and hits the kid. The kid goes to dirt, and I come and bang, I says, you're out. It's a scorcher at Indianapolis, and it's going to be a lotter before they've run the 37th 500-mile Memorial Day race around this two-and-a-half-mile oval. We're on the straightaway as the Purdue University Band parades before almost 200,000 race fans. In a few moments, 33 racing mounts, the fastest field ever to compete at this world-famous brickyard, will roll out, then streak down this straightaway at speeds up to 180 miles an hour. Here is the biggest single sporting event in the world with a purse worth over a quarter of a million dollars. Big and tough, 500 blistering miles in less than four hours. They're rolling them out now. These sleek speed wagons costing more than $30,000 each. 5,500 RPM, more finely tuned than your watch, ready to be pushed to the ragged edge of endurance for car and driver. There they come, the 33 fastest cars out of 87 hopefuls. This is the moment built of hopes and dreams, of months of work and planning. Action began at the track a month ago when they rolled out of the pit area, out of the garages to get set for the 10-mile qualifying run. Those brief seconds when the track's clear and you're really rolling, testing your machine for endurance, power, and that last precious ounce of speed. And you never know what's next when you roll out. He's into the first turn too hard. And they're ready to qualify. Two weekends to do it, and the weather can cut your chances. Toward the close of the first day of qualifying, Bill Vukovic driving hard streaks round the southwest corner. Out of the back stretch, he's pouring it on. The sky is clouding up. His first lap, a blazing 139 miles per hour. And he goes into the back stretch on his last lap as rain begins to fall. Here he comes. And Vukovic qualifies at 138 miles per hour. He's got the important pole position and the rest cover up and wait out the rain. Sam Hanks is ready on the second and last qualifying weekend. There's Mel Torme, noted singer and race fan. Sam rolls away from the pit, driving the Bardol Special that won third place for him last year. And he's on it, piloting number three into the southwest corner as a good crowd watches. And he qualifies at a snapping 137 and one half. There are plenty waiting a turn. Duke Nalon warms up the Novi Special, the only V8 front drive in the field, and he's away. Listen to that big cat scream. He does it, 135 and a half miles an hour. The weekend wears on. 27 qualifiers in one day, a new record. Bumping of slower cars begins on Sunday, the last day of qualifying. The pressure is on. Bill Holland in number 49 gets a second chance to qualify a car after his first mount is bumped. This number 49 has shown no speed over 130. But Holland, Indy winner in 19 and 49, is on the comeback trail. After a fast practice run, he takes the flag, diving into the groove in the south turn. He's really covering ground. His first lap, a scorching 138.2. The crowd holds its breath. Can he keep this pace up? And he averages almost 138 for four laps. And is his wife happy? Yes, we eat. Bill gets his crew together and gives them a full report as qualifying ends. 
Engines who didn't make the grade pack up. The job of disassembling and repairing cars and engines gets underway. New parts, new assemblies, new gear ratios. The secrets of the mechanics trade, learned through years of experiment and testing, are put to work. From a four-lap speed attempt, the emphasis is shifted to the grind of a 500-mile pull. 200 laps. The 33 qualifying cars range in speed between 135 and 138 miles per hour, a difference of only six seconds between the slowest and the fastest. And now the mechanics work to squeeze the last bit of speed, the final measure of safety and mechanical endurance for the big race. Of the 33, only one engine, the Novi V8, is unique. The others, all Meyer Drake four cylinders, put it up to the mechanics to deliver that extra bit of performance. The week between qualifying and race day is spent adjusting and testing, running the track and back to the garages for more work. Now the last ceremony before race day, the driver's meeting. Wilbur Shaw, triple winner of the 500, and now president of the Speedway, addresses drivers and mechanics. For a great sportsman you are, and we hope that everyone uh, does the kind of a job that you want to do in driving your automobiles. We hope that God will take good care of all of you, and that we have a wonderful race tomorrow, and God bless all of you. Thank you very much. That, that does it. No driver's meeting is complete without a movie star's footprint preserved for posterity. In this case, it's lovely Jane Greer. Whoops, is she stuck? That's better. Don't forget the shoes. Race morning, 5 o'clock. <laughs> Through every gate, lines five miles long begin to move. Race fans from all over the country have come home to Indiana. The sun is burning off the early mist. There's a hot breeze blowing. Number 98 with Tony Battenhausen is rolled out. a headline good every year. Vukovic number 14 is rolled to its pit. And they haven't been wasting their time in the infield either. If you don't have a grandstand ticket, you can still have a grandstand. Tear out the plumbing, Dad. We're going to see the race. Say, that's really taking it easy. And that's really easy to take. Babes? And babes. He's seen a lot of races. The crowd is still pouring in. And they're rolling out of the pits to the starting line. Vukovic, nervous and impatient at the pole position. Fred Agabasian, center of the first row. Jack McGrath on the outside. That's Paul Russo. Rosie Cheek, Marshall Teague, AAA stock car champion in his first Indy race. 
Final adjustments. Some drivers have drilled extra holes in the windshield because of the heat. Dwayne Carter looks ready. Duke Nalon driving the Novi in his 10th race. Veterans and rookies alike, tense and waiting. When you get this close to starting time, there's nothing to do but wait. There go the balloons, the traditional ceremony before starting. There's a stiff wind and the temperature's moving into the 90s. Pace car rolls out. The mechanics scramble back to the pits. They line up smoothly. Vukovic on the inside. Number 59 next, and McGrath pulling up in number five in the first turn. In recent years, the winner has come from the first three rows, but there's no calling this one. Into the north end of the track, heading for home and lap number one. The pace car pulls over. The green flag. They're off! Vukovic in 14 jumps from the pole to a quick lead. Eulo, number 88, out of the second row, roars into second place. Bettenhausen in number 98 takes third, forcing McGrath and Agabation back. Vukovic sets a new mark for the first lap, an average of 133 miles an hour, almost 180 on the straightaway. And he's driving alone. Bettenhausen and Ayulo fight for second place coming into the chute. Here they come. Ayulo has the range and he squeezes through. Agabation, 59, is fourth. Art Cross, Rookie of the Year in 1952, moves up among the leaders. Andy Linden spins. He's not injured, but he's out of the race. The field is slowed by the yellow flag. Now they're rolling again. Ayulo in 88 keeps second. Agabation is third. Johnny Parsons, 1950 winner, takes fifth. Sam Hanks in the Bardall Special, right behind him. Vukovic gains on the tail of the field. He roars through the first 50 miles in 22 and a half minutes. Walt Faulkner pits, magneto trouble. Mechanics swarm over the engine, fighting to get it back into the running. Walt gets an ice pack for his neck. Man, is it hot. Buki keeps steaming along. Number 77, Pat Flaherty moves up on Scarborough. Parsons comes in for water and fuel. He looks mighty hot with less than a quarter of the race run. Stevenson, the national AAA champ, is out. A leaking fuel tank. Vuk 
Bukie's crew call him in after two more laps. Number 59 takes the lead as Buki slows. Hanks moves up. Gene Hartley in 41 is driving hard. Here's Buki pitting on lap 49. His crew moves into action with trained precision developed during weeks of practice. At the 100 mile mark, he has set a new average speed record of 133.7 miles an hour. Less than 45 minutes to run the first 100 miles. Now his crew, with amazing teamwork, fights the clock to get him moving again. Sam Hanks is fighting Rathman for the lead. Hanks and the Bardol special leading now. Go, Bill, go! 47 seconds and on his way. One of the fastest complete pit stops in track history. Bill gets back in a sizzling pace, less than a lap behind. Can Sam Hanks hold the lead? His number three is flying. Gene Hartley in 41 hits the wall on the north turn. The yellow caution signal goes up. Hanks decides to pit as the cars are slowed down. He's gambling his lap prize money against victory. Now Vukovic grabs the lead. It's worth $150 for every lap. Art Crossan, 16, is now in second. Carl Scarborough pits. The crowd senses something's wrong. He can't go on. The heat has beaten him. Bob Scott comes on as relief driver. Hanks pressing. The Novi stakes off Bukovic. Say, that's one way of cooling off. It's Don Freeland in 38. He's one of the six rookies here this year. He's all right, but he's out of the race. And it's number 77 pressing Sam Hanks. Russo brings in number seven. A drive coupling couldn't take it. Halfway point for Vukovic. Aggravation in 59 holds second. Hanks in number three is third. Cross in number 16, fourth. Aggravation's crew signals. Paul Russo out of disabled number seven pounds the circulation back into his hands, numb with gripping the wheel. Here comes Aggravation. he gets out of his harness as Russo jumps in. Tough luck, Freddy. And the tempo increases. It's Flaherty in 77. Miraculously, he's not seriously hurt. The yellow 
flag slows the field. Oil from the wrecked car has to be removed from the track. The car is totally wrecked. After 285 miles, Vukovic makes his second pit stop. Two minutes ahead of Art Cross and Sam Hanks, running 10 seconds apart in second and third. And he's rolling again in one minute and one second with four new tires, a tank of fuel, and a lap to spare. Second place for Art Cross. Vuki holds the lead. Bettenhausen's 98 rolls in. Tony slumped in the seat. He's exhausted, unable to move. And while he recovers, Stevenson takes over for him. Watch out, mister. There's no more track over there. Marshall Teague, the stock car champion, is helped from the cockpit. Those cheeks aren't rosy anymore. With Carl Scarborough already a victim of heat prostration, Teague is led away. They keep to a blistering pace as temperature on the track soars to 130 degrees. Vukovic makes his third stop. 28 laps to go. It's water down his neck and another cup to drink. Henry Banks is standing by as a relief driver. But Vukovic won't leave his seat. The crew again performs miracles. The works in 49 seconds. He's rolling, and only an accident like that which caught him nine laps from victory last year can stop him now. He gets a standing ovation from the crowd. Highballing again, carrying the freight at 130 miles an hour. Hot cross holds second. Number 59 is fourth. Duane Cotter, relieving Sam Hanks, is third. Just look at him go! Gene Hartley replaces Stevenson in 98, the third driver for this car. It's lap 198 for Vuki. Now they're moving the trophy to the winner's circle. Cross and Agabasian still back. Gene Hartley spins into the infield, almost the exact spot where he lost number 41 earlier. One lap to go. Buki's wife waits anxiously in the winner's circle. Bill Vukovic wins it. Three hours, 53 minutes. Number 59 still fighting. But for them, the race is over. Vukovic takes a triumphal turn before the grandstands as the crowd cheers wildly. And into the winner's circle, his crew crowding around. It's their victory as well as his. Vukovic, hot and grimy, taking the congratulations for himself, his car and his crew. He can't hear the roar of the motor still ringing in his ears. Now a kiss from his wife and from Jane Greer. Vuki wins a cool $89,500 in the hottest 500. And it's a perfect record for perfect circle equipment. Engines with perfect circle piston rings took the first 10 winning positions. For winning performance in any engine, car, truck, the standard of comparison.